Today we have another video on surprising guest stars of the Law & Order Cinematic Universe. This is SVU edition, season nine, episode one. I wanted to thank you. Don't mention it. I know that you had to pull some strings to keep me here after my suspension. Yeah. Just hope it didn't cost you too much. We have Liv Benson's short hair era. I thought that this was earlier, but I guess season nine it was pretty, pretty early, actually, in the lifespan. I mean, the show's still on, so that, that's fairly early on, I guess. You're to supervise. That's insane. Guess what they put in charge. I had nothing to do with that. Munch. I've mentioned my adoration of the character of Munch um, in this episode. He is Sergeant Munch. It was an honor serving under you, sir. I'm not dead yet, Detective Lake. I forgot about Detective Lake. He has such a sad ending to his character. If you know, you know what I'm talking about. But I really like this character, and I was bummed that they went the way they went with him. Excuse me. I'll just say it right now, I am a Miranda. So, for whatever that's worth. If someone straight up told you that they were a Carrie, what would your reaction be? To flee? Excuse me. I need to report a possible case of child abuse. Oh, so Miranda Nixon plays a psychiatrist and she's coming in to report her patient, Janice, because Janice has said that she's been harming her own child. I'm treating the mother for postpartum depression. And how old is this child? A year. Benson and Stabler storm in to find Janice and twist one of the episode. Janice is Cynthia Nixon's character. So something is not right. It's Janice. If you like my work, if you like my videos, please like and subscribe. Quick background on Cynthia Nixon. Sex in the City ran on HBO from 98 to 2004. Huge, huge show, you know, huge, obviously. Three years after the last episode of Sex in the City, she guest starred in this episode of SVU. So three years. If you look at her IMDb, she has been pretty consistently working since the end of Sex and the City. I think she's probably pretty financially set after that show. So I think she's someone that just loves acting and that's why she popped up in this, this guest role here. Back to the episode. Who's Dr. Anna Young? Can't find anybody by that name. I knew there was something hinky about her. Benson and Stabler, the dynamic duo, are on the case and they're talking to a bunch of different people that know Janice and they figure out that there is an actual child at danger. Like the child is not made up. There is a child. Janice has, you know, been taking care of a child, presumably her daughter, because that's what she told us. She works at a museum. If she's not there, all I have is an emergency contact and all the different people describe Janice's strange behavior. I would point to the clock, but then she would start crying and ask me why I was playing tricks on her. Do you think that she could hurt her baby? You know, she threw April's bottle at me once after she spit up. What did you do with your baby, Janice? I'm not big enough to have a baby. And my name's not Janice, it's Tammy. And where did Bert take her? I don't know. Enough. I've had enough of your games. This is you. This is your child. But you couldn't handle motherhood, so you abandoned her. Always a sensitive stabler. <laughs> From what you're telling me, she has dissociative identity disorder, or what we used to call multiple personalities. Right, and I call it a crock. You know, in the cases that I've seen, it's almost always the result of long-term childhood sexual abuse. Huang is actually, like, top three of my favorite characters from all of Law & Order. He's just so good. He's just so kind, so level-headed. I really like him. I'm Detective Benson. Who are you? I'm Dory. Would you please tell this a-hole that I didn't do anything wrong, so I don't need a lawyer? Well, it sounds like she's changed her mind. I don't think she's competent. <laughs> if you really want to get rid of this guy, all you gotta do is send a Janice Donovan. I forgot how messed up this is. Clearly this woman is having some kind of mental health issue and Stabler and Benson use that to their advantage. They manipulate her and I know it's 2007, but damn. Hmm.
What's going on? Not Huang, my favorite. Um, this scene isn't totally working for me. Like as soon as he touches her, she switches alters and it gets very dramatic very quickly. It feels a bit silly. Janice is my sister. She was taking care of April for me. So Janice's sister shows up and it's revealed that the kid, the missing kid is actually the sister's daughter. It's not actually Janice's daughter. Who do you see in the mirror? I see you. Uh-huh. Standing next to Janice. That's right. What is it, some kind of high-tech rear projection? No, this is not a trick. You see, that is you. <laughs> what did that do to you? The two sisters have experienced, you know, childhood abuse, and Janice ran away as soon as she could. Um, and this ties back to what Huang has told us about dissociative identity disorder that childhood trauma can can cause it. So it's all making sense. The pieces are fitting. You okay? Cass, what are you doing here? Is April all right? Yeah, she's fine. I've been treating her for DID for a year. She has five personalities. All functional. We have no grounds to commit her. She's not a threat to herself or others. She flew into a rage and threw a chair. That nearly hit you. These two elderly parents are shot and killed, and they are Janice's parents. Her name is Janice Donovan. I told you we should have had her committed. Hey, Kathy, now's not a good time. One of Janice's alters, Doris, comes to Stabler's house and basically scares the bejesus out of his wife, his poor wife. Love at first sight. He kneeled down and then he winked and there was this electricity. She's not far off. I mean, he was definitely, you know, feeding into that. He killed Janice's parents. Yeah. Woo! Benson rescues Sabler. Glad to see it. You don't remember any of this? Leave her alone! Oh, Leave her alone! See, luckily our techs were able to restore the research that you deleted on multiple personalities. I was good, wasn't I? She faked the whole thing, damn, another twist. Uh, the first time I saw this episode, which was years ago, they got me, they got me several times. I was actually just watching a video on the Be Kind Rewind channel, and it was talking about like DID and how it was portrayed in media and movies. And basically the person that runs that channel was saying that these type of portrayals where someone's faking DID is super damaging to people that that actually have it. Yeah, and I wonder why, because there's so many movies where characters just pretending. I was reading this article on The Hollywood Reporter and apparently Cynthia Nixon appeared in season one, episode two of Law and Order. I think that makes sense to me. I feel like I've heard that she lives in New York, so yeah, why not? Why not go into Law and Order and work where you live? Probably very convenient. Nixon has two Emmys, one from Sex in the City, I don't know which season, and then another one, Outstanding Guest Actors in a Drama Series for this episode. I read that Nixon agreed to this role because she found it to be a really juicy character, like something she could really sink her teeth into, and I mean it was, right? She had to play a bunch of different kind of facets of, of one person and a bunch of different personalities, so I bet it was a lot of fun for her as an, as an actress. What's going on? I've been uh, temporarily reassigned Chief of D's office. Why? You aided your fugitive brother. Elliot covered up his kid's DUI. Finn's stepson butchered two people and walked. Somebody's gotta take the heat. 